Little is known about the International Crimes Division that is in the process of being formed here in Kenya to try international crimes and in the process complements the work of the International Criminal Court. The question of complementarity is a practical matter. We cannot be complementing ourselves. We are complementing each other. The court is complementing us. We are complementing the court. It's a two-way traffic. The court must in itself be in a position to be complemented. The Judicial Service Commission has begun a process that would establish it at the High Court. The Kenya High Court, under Section 8 of the International Crimes Act, has the jurisdiction to conduct trials against persons responsible for international crimes committed locally or abroad by a Kenyan or committed in any place against a Kenyan. That jurisdiction has been in place since January 2009 when the International Crimes Act became effective. The Act domesticated the Rome Statute which defines and incorporates the crimes of genocide, war crimes and crimes against humanity into Kenyan law. President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto and journalist Joshua Arapsang are currently facing crimes against humanity charges. But the International Crimes Division will have nothing to do with the Kenyan cases before the ICC, or will it? The judiciary in Kenya is as free as the judiciary that is the court. Complementarity must be on the basis of mutual respect, professional recognition, uh, and the realization that Kenya is not a failed state. Kenya is a functioning democracy that has independent institutions. And as the Kenyan delegation attending the Assembly of States parties informed the conference, the division is being set up to also try those accused of perpetrating crimes during the post-election violence of 2007, when some 1,300 people were killed and nearly half a million others displaced. Discourse continues on whether the division should handle not only international crimes, but also transnational or cross-border crimes such as terrorism, piracy, drug trafficking, trafficking in humans and body parts, money laundering and counterfeit goods. The Director of Public Prosecutions, however, reckoned that the lack of investigative, prosecutorial and judicial capacity is a reality in Kenya. Some of the files opened after the post-election violence are yet to be closed six years on. We have proposed that it be modeled on the standards of ICC, of course, with the necessary modifications for, to, to, to suit the, the Kenyan situation. It will be a seven-judge bench sitting in three panels with an extra judge. Uh, but th this is when the, uh, the, the court is fully established. And the ICD will be sitting in Nairobi, but also be capable to hold proceedings elsewhere in the country. The division is also expected to have a special prosecutor independent of the Director of Public Prosecutions, an office that is currently not provided for in the Constitution. There will also be trained investigators and prosecution lawyers, a registry and a victim's protection agency. From the advice we got from Uganda and from Cambodia, we are proposing to have a, a, in place a, a registrar to start with. And once we have the registrar in place, and we wanted to do this in, in January or February of next year, then we are ready to move. Some human rights groups, however, have doubts about the government's commitment to set up the International Crimes Division. Given the current context prevailing in Kenya, and especially the political environment, I have here in mind the uh, proposed repeal of the International Crimes Act, and yet uh, the report of the JSC states very clearly that the legal framework for the establishment of the ICD will be the Int International Crimes Act. Critical stakeholders' workshops are underway to draw the roadmap of ensuring the International Crimes Division is fully facilitated to carry out prosecutions independently. Sylvia Chabet, Citizen Weekend.